Hello, I'm Sylvia Wolf, and I'm the president and CEO of Aqua Bounty. So, you know, the salmon market is a critical one. It's the second most consumed seafood across the globe. It's large, it's growing, but it has some challenges from the perspective of supply. And that's because there are a number of different challenges that current producers are facing. For example, you've got environmental challenges, weather-related challenges. We've got some disease challenges going on um, in a number of uh, geographies. And then there's regulatory issues like the west coast of Canada um, that want to outlaw net pen farming. And also the tax situation in Norway is still unsettled. And so what that's doing is constraining supply of salmon when the demand is really, really strong globally. And so that's, that's a perfect position for aqua bounty because our land-based recirculating aquaculture system far, method of farming will play a, a crit, an increasingly critical role in providing um, you know, supply to meet that ever-growing demand. And we're, we're currently seeing prices that are at 20-year highs. Um, our method of farming and our pricing strategy, if you will, is to make salmon affordable and accessible to a broader range of people. So that's part of um, our business model, is to, to create that affordability to bring a healthy protein to market. I think local production of any product is becoming increasingly important to consumers. They want to know where their food comes from. And I think if COVID taught us anything, it's that our food security isn't guaranteed. And that having a domestic source of supply is always a good um, method of, of bringing food to market. And so I think that consumers increasingly want local, they want a domestic uh, and secure um, source of supply. Consumers also are very aware of environmental impacts. You know, there's been a lot of discussions around greenhouse gases, carbon footprint, and salmon, unfortunately, um, has, has a carbon footprint that isn't necessarily best for the environment. But that's simply because our current farming methodology requires us to farm in waters that are cold, and, but a lot of the markets are like the U.S., where you don't have the ability um, off the coast to be able to farm salmon. And so we're importing 400,000 roughly metric tons a year with a carbon footprint that isn't necessarily best for the environment. Aquaboni's pricing strategy is definitely to be competitive. One of the things that we believe in is we need to keep that price at a, an affordable level because our view is that if you keep it at an affordable level, and our prices are really high right now, which means that some people are just going to switch out of salmon, but if you keep it at an affordable level, more consumers will eat salmon. And so we want to make sure that we are at a competitive price point so that we can attract more consumers into the salmon category. So we operate currently two farms. One is a broodstock facility on Prince Edward Island in Canada, so that's where all of our eggs are coming from. We operate a farm just north of Indianapolis in Albany, and we've been harvesting there for well over a year and selling all of the output, but it's a relatively small farm. And then we're building a 10,000 metric ton farm in Pioneer, Ohio. And we are under construction. Um, we are working on the first phase, which would be things like incubation, first feeding, nursery, and early rearing. And we're getting ready to finalize the designs for the second part of that farm. And that construction would begin probably sometime mid this summer. So our current farm, in, just to give you a perspective, our farm in Indiana produce, has the capacity to be able to produce um, roughly 1,200 metric tons. The farm in Ohio will produce 10,000 metric tons. So it's about eight times the size of what we could capably do in Indiana. In Indiana. So our GE salmon, um, the genetic engineering on that product actually took place 30 years ago. And we've been breeding our salmon conventionally. They spawn just like any other salmon um, for 30 years, right? So we haven't touched their gene structure in 30 years. We're now on our 15th cohort that's being raised in our Indiana, Indiana farm. The perception, I think, um, is a false one with lots of misinformation. 
know, there's, there's always a stated concern that what happens if there's an escape? Well, our farms are in the central part of the United States, away from the coast, away from native salmon populations, and there's reasons for that. The first is access to good groundwater because we raise our fish in fresh water. And the second is, you know, we are required by, you, by the FDA to have set several layers of physical containment so that there's no chance of escape. And the fish that we bring into those production facilities will be sterile females. So when activists talk about the risk of escape, we haven't had an escape ever in 25 years. And what I would say to the activists, and I think most consumers are starting to recognize this, is using tools like biotechnology to be able to feed nine billion people. We've got to have a productive food supply and the old methods aren't going to get us there. So products like ours are really going to play an important role in feeding the planet and protecting the planet going forward. And so we're seeing a real shift in, in terms of how consumers perceive biotechnology and what its benefits can be. And we believe that that's gonna affect our fish positively. And as I said, we're selling all of the output that we can harvest in Indiana. I thank you very much for the opportunity to share our story.